I just want to welcome everyone here to, uh, and thank everyone for joining us tonight uh, with uh, Alyssa and I. Alyssa, <laughs> <laughs> so my name is Christy O'Connor. I am one of BSB Gallery's curators and managers. For any of you that are, is not aware of VSB Gallery, we are located in uh, Trenton, New Jersey. We are owned and operated by the Trenton Downtown Association. And we, um, uh, our mission is to kind of generally revitalize the downtown area of Trenton, New Jersey. And so we are a 501c3 nonprofit art space. And, oh, sorry, I'm getting distracted by admitting more people in. <laughs> And so um, ba basically, um, Alyssa was supposed to have an exhibition with us uh, this month. She was sp supposed to have a solo ex exhibition in our G2 gallery space, but because of all of the nonsense with coronavirus happening, we had to postpone. But, you know, she's an amazing talent and still wanted to, um, you know, share her artwork with us. So she, you know, very, uh, generously decided to do this uh, neon demonstration with us, which we are so excited for. <laughs> so um, before we get started, I'm going to give a little bit of a background on Alyssa. Um, Alyssa, uh, uh, bleh. <laughs> so Alyssa works in neon sculpture and photography, born in Lowell, Massachusetts in 1981. She received her BFA from the Second School of the Museum of Fine Arts, Boston, and she began learning neon in New Orleans in 2010, which is super cool. <laughs> and before apprenticing under Dom Ur Urbani at Urban Neon in Philadelphia. So for those of you tuning in, I just um, want to remind you, um, again, pin Alyssa's video so that you could see what she's doing. And feel free to put comments and questions in the group chat and keep your audio on mute so that we don't get any back feed. And, and otherwise we should just keep the videos turned off and whatnot. Um, so without further introduction, Alyssa, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I'm so excited for this demonstration and I'm just so excited to see you. <laughs> I know I haven't seen you in so long. And thank you everybody for coming. I'm really excited to do this. I've never done a neon demo before and I'm super excited. <laughs> so um yeah so Alyssa um yeah I want to thank you for for joining us tonight and bringing us into your studio. Um is there anything that you'd like to share about us that I missed in the little, in the little introduction that you'd like to add? No, I think you covered, you know, the basics. Um, I was born in Lowell and I grew up in New England. Um, I spent most of my time as an artist working in photography before I started doing neon. Um, I guess I'm really drawn to like very process oriented mediums. Um, and I think of, film photography as being kind of similar to neon in that. It's like a multi-step process. Mm -hmm. um, so before, yeah, before I did neon, it was mostly only photography. And uh, I do a little bit of sculpture as well, like, like you covered. And I just want to add, you have done some very fun photography. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a photographer. Okay. <laughs> I still do photography, um, and again, I shoot only film. I use like kind of these old school cameras. Let me see if we can see. I don't know if you can see back there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, large format. Yeah, <laughs> yeah large format or medium format. Um, I'm really I I love like the process, but I kind of started moving away from working with photography when the darkroom started disappearing. Yeah. I do color and I don't really enjoy working digitally. Um, I'm like super excited that photography has become digital because it gives access to so many more people and like I love to see what other people can do with it but I'm like such a stickler for the dark room. <laughs> uh, well, I, still do I definitely art. understand that. <laughs> yeah. yeah I love that whole process like making the contact sheets um, 
shooting film, like the surprise of seeing what you're going to get, it's all like part of the process for me. You know? mm -hmm. Nice. So uh, what prompted you to, to decide to learn neon in the first place? I mean, that's such a, I, I mean, in the grand scape of all of, all of the artwork, it's, it's, it, in, in a way it feels a little like, did you, like, what prompted you into Neil? <laughs> I, so, Especially I think from photography. <laughs> most people, I think anybody that's in this group probably thinks Neon is really cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I don't think I've ever met a person that doesn't think that, but maybe they exist, I don't know. Um, you kind of grow up with it, uh, having this sort of like mysterious allure. And I don't think that I thought about it beyond that but I think doing photography for so long uh, I used it a lot in pictures or just sort of as like ambiance and I remember I worked in a photo studio in New York City for five years and we would rent uh, pieces of neon for photo shoots from this place called let there be neon <laughs> and it's still there it's been around for so long it's amazing if you're ever able to go you should check it out and I just remember looking at the pieces and just thinking like, what like an amazing thing. And um, in 2010, I moved to New Orleans, kind of like to start afresh. I didn't know anyone there. And I moved all my belongings on my bicycle uh, via Greyhound bus and uh, biked from Jacksonville to New Orleans. And when I rolled into New Orleans, I remember passing a neon shop and just like thinking, I need to learn this. Like, this is what I want to do. I have to learn how to do it. And I didn't know how difficult Neon was going to be. I didn't really know what went into the process, like whether a machine could do it, which it, it can't, <laughs> um, or if it's all done by hand, which it is. Uh, but I just knew I needed to learn about it. So I just became obsessed. And luckily enough, um, there was a neon shop there called Neomedics, and uh, the owner, Todd Patton, who now lives in Arkansas, he let me come in and sort of like apprentice, just sort of like um, two days a week and watch and just like practice with the glass bending. And uh, I kind of got the impression that I would never be able to like get a job doing neon. Um, the idea of like Neon Apprentice and there being work for Neon Apprentice is, was kind of like, oh, nobody will ever hire you to do this. And luckily when I moved to Philly, um, Dom Urbani uh, hired me and let me come work for him. And I work in the shop or I worked in the shop during the day. And then after hours, he would let me practice Neon. And I started doing that in 2015 in the beginning of the year. and now I work full time in the neon shop. So Don was really a amazing mentor. He passed last summer unexpectedly mm -hmm. and um, it was really, really tough, but you know, luckily I'm still at the shop. It's a great place to work and I'm very grateful to get to work on my art after hours and bend neon during the day. And it's a family business and I love it. That's awesome. So, there were a few people that I admitted in while, while we were talking. And just as a reminder for those who joined us, if um, uh, pinning Alyssa's screen, if you're in gallery view, is the best way to be able to see her um, while she's bending. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if you have any questions while we're talking, uh, put them in the group chat and we will try to address them. Um, so, um, I know when you had applied to RG2 space and you were, uh, I had to look up the whole process of neon because I, like, I, I knew it existed and I knew it was, you know, it, it was a, th a thing and a, an art form, but I just didn't quite understand all that it takes and entails to go into creating a piece of neon. Yeah. So, for those of you, you know, for those of, uh, that are joining us, could, is there a way you could explain it to us in layman's terms? How I'm very, I'll, I'll kind of like lay it out. Um, real neon is 
electrified glass and you have straight sticks of glass that you hand bend and you attach electrodes on and you, uh, once the glass is bent, you attach it to a, a bombarding system and a vacuum pump and you're removing the air and heating it. And then you're filling it with like a low pressure gas, either neon or argon and a drop of mercury. And that's what creates most colors that you see. Um, clear glass with neon gas in it will be that sort of classic red and clear glass with argon and a drop of mercury in it will be like a pale blue. And you get a lot of your colors from different powder coating glasses and um, those two combinations. So it's essentially electrified glass, which I think is like the coolest thing in the world. <laughs> so it's dangerous to say the least to work with. <laughs> It, um, it is dangerous to pump while you're pumping it if you were to grab onto it. Um, and you know, you are using flames, so you have to be careful, but it's not particularly dangerous, like once it's pumped um, and ready. You know, it's a, con it's a closed unit and it can last like 50 years yeah. or longer. There was something in the news recently about uh, a neon piece that they found behind a wall that had been lit since 1942 that they wow. just found and it's still on. So, you know, it can last forever. So it's not like this crazy dangerous thing, but you do have to be alert while you're working with it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Michelle, Michelle Wary is asking, is it toxic? It's not toxic. The... Um, if you were to break a piece of neon, it's, it's broken glass. Uh, if you break a piece of neon that's filled with the argon and drop of mercury, you do have the mercury. Uh, so you do have to be careful with that, but it's not like toxic uh, as long as it's enclosed. It's no more dangerous than like a, a light, uh, fluorescent light or something. It's actually quite similar to fluorescent lights in a lot of ways, so. Nice. But. Um, so, what what were your biggest challenges in, in learning to work with neon? It like learning to do neon has been the most challenging thing I've ever done, and uh, it, all of that has to do with working with the glass. Glass bending takes years to get good at it, and it's one of those things that I know glass benders that have been doing it for thirty years, and they still are like, I don't know if I can bend this piece. You know, like you look at the pattern and you're like. I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> um, I have thrown glass at the wall. Everybody I know has done that. I've tried like things like it's just, it takes so long and it is so rewarding because of that, but it can be so difficult. And I'm not sure if there's anybody in this uh, chat that works with other, other types of glass. It might just be working with glass in general is like that, but you could spend all day bending a sign and have it crack at the when you filled it and then you have to start over again. Mm -hmm. So you it's work very easily. And once something starts going wrong, more things go wrong. And that's just how it always works. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just the glass bending is really, it's a challenge. You have to be completely um, present for it. Like mm -hmm. if you have things going on in your life that's distracting and stressful, it makes it almost impossible to do a good job. And in some ways that's really challenging, obviously, because we all have lives and stuff that happens, but also it helps you like be very focused and it is uh, one of the more rewarding aspects of it. Yeah, nice. So as, as I had mentioned earlier, you were originally scheduled to have a solo exhibition with us in G2. Yeah. Week. And um, we are rescheduling to next year. But for those who are, t who are tuning in and not familiar, I'm, I, I believe I'm the only one familiar with <laughs> what your show is about. <laughs> Would you like to um, uh, elaborate on what you were planning on exhibiting with us and what will be in G2 next year? Definitely. Um, so the show is called Already Dreamed. And um, the pieces were all, uh, exploring different aspects of time dissonance. Um, some of the pieces 
have to do with nostalgia, some more about like um, seeking after the paranormal, but basically just thinking about different ways that we have like process time and <clears throat> kind of creating objects out of memories. Um, like I did one that was like sort of a real uh, piece of like those uh, 80s like laser backgrounds that we used to have our pictures taken in front of. And I was like really excited to make a real object of this thing that like, I don't even, it was a backdrop. It wasn't even a real like piece. Mm -hmm. So it was just kind of like using memory and um, sort of ideas about the future and kind of overlapping them together to come up with pieces. Nice. And I know you also had in, envisioned a piece for that window too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to do a piece they have a beautiful window in the g2 space that's like i but i want that to be a surprise okay, oh, okay. <laughs> we won't talk about that then. <laughs> um so we are in your studio and i know you have some pieces hung up on lit would you like to show us what you have around just hanging out there yeah, yeah, I'll show you. Let me grab this camera and I'll. So hopefully, let me see if we can, if I can flip my camera around. I don't know. If they'll let me do that. Let me see. Um, I need to just like flip it so it's not viewing anyway i don't know if you can see or is it too bright <laughs> well it is bright but it, i think i think the closer you go the more we make it out so this piece is uh it actually says the word nothing uh in it and it's kind of like having to do with the desire to communicate uh while being obscured still mm -hmm. um it's also kind of based off like band logos um but i don't yeah you can see so the, all that started as, as like a one stick of glass and so all those pieces and everything are hand bent so that's one piece um and then this is another piece here i don't know if you can see yeah i can see we can see that one yeah that was that one better <laughs> yeah um, so that's that's based off uh, the shape that everyone kind of drew in middle school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, when I was working on this piece, like multiple generations of people came up to me and were like, I used to draw that. And I'm like, it's the thing that everyone used to draw. draw. So it's another one of those sort of um, memory pieces. Yeah. yeah. Those so are small I pieces. I noticed between the two pieces, one is much brighter than the other. Does that, is there like a scientific reason behind that? I'm glad you asked that. Okay, so white is definitely very, very bright, um, that first piece, but also I used a thinner millimeter glass and uh, the thinner the glass, the brighter it is. Um, most glass, ranges between like eight millimeter, which that first piece is to 15 and 15 millimeter is what we use for like borders uh, outside a lot because it's like a lot bigger, but it won't be as bright. Um, but yeah, the, the, the smaller uh, diameter glass is a lot brighter. <laughs> for and, sure. And approximately how long did it take to make I guess uh, the first piece. It's hard to say. Uh, I mean, you. So there's a lot of again steps that go into making these pieces, and that's one of the reasons I love it so much. But you come up with a pattern first. <clears throat> so you come up with an idea, and then you have to turn it into a pattern, and um, that is when you're kind of figuring out how you're going to connect everything because 
basically everything has to be connected. It's all one stick of glass between each unit. So like that first piece I showed you was two separate pieces, um, but it all has to be connected. So you have to do that first, and then you have to figure out what millimeter glass you're gonna use and how much footage of uh, glass it's gonna be, and then you have to figure out um, how much electricity you're gonna need essentially. So it's, it's a lot of different steps. And then the bending itself, I worked on that for a couple of weeks, but it wasn't like 10 hours at a time. I don't bend that much at a time um, when I'm not at work. So it would be after hours. So it took me a couple of weeks, you know. Okay, nice. Yeah. But my, my first sign, my Alyssa sign, which you'll see in a minute when I'm bending, it's hung up over here. I think that took me like a year. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was the, your first one. <laughs> Last went into the garbage for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Only get one try, you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I guess we're we are ready to get you into in, into bending. Are you just doing that on regular regular drawing paper that you're laying it on? Yep, and then I have um, green over it, which prevents it from burning. Got you. 
stainless steel. Don't use the ones from your window. <laughs> Yeah, you can know, I use uh, fiberglass. We tried that out, it didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm making this look kind of easy. Maybe I'll make Jake try it. He's never tried. We'll be certain to have an explosion. <laughs> I my hair back this time so I don't burn my bangs off. Okay, so now I'm going to do a bend and drop. So it's kind of like a right angle and dropping back down. It gets harder and harder to kind of like keep around the glass the more bends you do. So I'm kind of like trying to do the best I can here. But that's how it always goes. So right when I uh, bend, I'm blowing into it. And that's what keeps the glass from collapsing. Mm. So if you don't blow into it, the glass will just completely close off. And how hot is that flame? Do you know? What was that? How hot is the flame? How hot? Yeah. Uh, or it depends. Um, it gets pretty hot. Uh, it depends on what you're using. Um, I'm using propane right now, and that's a new thing for me. At the top, I use um, natural gas, and the propane gets a lot hotter, but I, I'm not sure how hot. Hot enough to melt glass. <laughs> so I'm just doing a basic ease right now. I mean, it, you know, the first couple of years you're learning, you're just like practicing those things that go learn over again. That's all it is. You can see when I blow into it. Mm. Front facing camera business is showing to be pretty challenging. <laughs> so we, we have a question from Ken. What's that? I wish I could let everybody try it. <laughs> so I'm just watching me, but so, okay, I'm about to bend and blow. Okay. Wow, that's cool. So we have a question from Catherine. She's asking, is some glass rarer than others? And if so, does it affect your work? What was the question? Is some glass rare, rare, rarer than others, and does it affect your work? The types of glass rare? more rare. More rare, yeah. Um, yeah. So there's like different types of glass. Um, most of it is pretty easy to work with, but then there's a uh, glass that's colored. If the glass itself is, and those are like. Um, like Italian glasses, and that can really affect how the glass handles. Like uh, the red glass is called ruby red and um, bromo blue. Those two colors, the glass itself is the color, red or blue, and it, just, it processes really weird. It's beautiful, but it can be really difficult to work with. Um, also, the different thickness of the glass, like I'm using 10 millimeter glass right now, uh, that's usually what I like to work with for my art pieces, eight or ten. Uh, but fifteen millimeter, that's 
a thicker glass, and that could be harder to bend. Um, I actually like bending 15 millimeter glass, but at first I was very intimidated by it, but just different diameters. Yeah. <laughs> You cannot take heat and be a neon vendor. <laughs> it's hot in here right now. <laughs> yeah, that right. <laughs> so, you see the glass tip uh, plastic is what's called. And that means spray to bend. So I'm going to drop it on my pattern right away. It's also a good idea to uh, move your pattern around. Like if I have to do this next bend here, I'll move my pattern. You always have to think a couple steps ahead with me on like where's the glass tip though? You don't want to bend yourself into a corner. Mm. So you have to skip bend. I bend myself into a corner all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm marking out my pattern here. Also, if you make a mistake, you generally have to start over, or you have to cut back to the place where you can do a weld. Uh, in clear glass, you can do a weld pretty much anywhere, so it's not usually considered good to do a weld on the base of anything. But with the powder coated glasses, uh, it leaves a very noticeable mark. So, especially if you're making a sign for somebody you want to close really, really nice, and you don't want to have any weld. So we got kind of a knee. <laughs> nice. Alyssa, what is that tool that you're putting on top of it every time you place it down? This is um, a block of wood. And basically what it's doing is keeping uh, the whole piece flat. Um, you can see the neon is very three-dimensional in the back, but on the front, you want it all to be completely flat. If it's not flat, when you go to mount it, uh, it might break because you're going to have all these different types of neon that you're attaching. And it could always be flat. That's kind of like a huge no no if you have like neon that's not flat. Mm. So, um, well, I haven't turned on the ribbon burner yet. This is the thing that usually pinches my bang. Do you guys want to see that? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, okay. So, um, most of all the bends you're going to do, you're going to either use the crossfire or I usually use the cannon fire or on the ribbon burner. The ribbon burner is good for a really long bend and that gets very, very hot. So after we do that, we might have like, all the, uh, the bending portion off <laughs> <laughs> because um, for my setup, I don't need both of them on at the same time. So, 
So I marked out my pattern for my glass right here. Oh, that's <laughs> this one gets very hot. So you can see this is not uh, good for like longer. So you uh, use this one for like circles and edges and stuff like that. Mm. I don't always need my pillows for this. Like you do still have to torque one end, I'm torquing it. So again, you're just trying to keep it evenly. And then when you start kind of losing control of the glass, that's when you really have to be controlling it very well. So drop it on the pattern. Make sure it's flat. Part of it is over here. This one's like crazy hot. Oh, wow. Probably gonna touch this one So you can pull it out and get to the So is, is that flame primarily for doing like uh, curves for circular objects then? Yes. Okay. Speaking of an O, um, people sometimes think that that would be really easy. It's actually the hardest thing you can bend is an O uh, because you have to close it up. And yeah. uh, it's actually like a series of seven or eight bends that you have to do to do an O. Um, maybe, maybe I'll do one of those next time. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's really crazy. So, yeah. um, so is is that all? Is that your your demonstration for us? Then? <laughs> oh, I, I I was asking. Um, do you do you have additional yeah, more bents if people want to see more? Um, Does anyone have any requests or questions that they have for Alyssa? I've got I've got. Excited comments. Um, Michelle says very neat to watch, and Kara said interesting. Zach, damn, that's wild. <laughs> and Dina, Alyssa, Alyssa, so amazing. Um, <laughs> does anyone have any questions or comments for Alyssa? Let's show everybody my Alyssa sign that yes. took me here to make. <laughs> Can't so, really see. So that was your first piece. Yes, yes. <laughs> my first official piece, my name. It took me a year. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome though. I mean, that's an achievement. I mean, I've I would have given up after probably a few days. <laughs> well, yeah, that's it's you have to love it. <laughs> and I do, you know, and it's just one of those things I it's it's so rewarding to work with every day and I really do enjoy it and you know like showing new people like I'm you know Dom I would always ask him what like how to repay him for everything that he did for me and he was just like train somebody else <laughs> and a younger co-worker was learning for a little while but I don't know he it does take a certain type of person <laughs> yeah a weird well person <laughs> and there's a lot of perseverance and you know also not to be accident prone <laughs> I'm very accident prone I and mean, you can definitely be accident prone uh, i don't know but you just have to uh yeah patience <laughs> yeah oh so so D dina just said thank you for sharing your skills with us and happy belated birthday Alyssa, was it your birthday <laughs> yeah a last last week <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I guess if no one has any additional questions for Alyssa, um, again, again, I want to thank you so much for doing this with us. Of course, it was so fun. <laughs> oh, I see Kara clapping in the background. <laughs> 
and she's got someone in the background with her. <laughs> Interesting. So, um, yeah, so without further ado, I'm going to just kind of wrap things up, you know, just with, with the gallery info. Sure. Um, yeah, again, Alyssa, I want to thank you for taking the time to teach us about Neon and, and bringing us into your studio tonight. This was so fun and... Yeah. Let's do it again. I'll teach you guys how to make that dreaded circle I was talking about next. <laughs> I, I get nervous just watching. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, I want to thank everyone for joining us tonight. And uh, before, be sure to um, follow us on our social media. Alyssa will be, um, you know, joining us next year in the G2C. Yep. And I'm so and I can share that very secret window piece. I'm oh, making. the secret window piece. I'm so excited. <laughs> but the, the awesome part about that space is it's like a, it's like a dark room and it's going to be lit up by all these neon, neon pieces. So it's going to glow. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Really excited. Yeah.